You're invited to worship with an ordained man of God, Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated at 8010 Rockbridge Road in Lithonia. This is Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast. Listen now to the inspiring message of preaching and teaching with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant. Praise the Lord, everyone. We'd like to be with you one more time at the WIGO legendary <laughs> radio station. God bless you. This will be uh, my last broadcast for about three weeks. I'll be out of the country on um, holding several conferences in the west coast of Africa. And so while well, I'm over there ministering to the brothers and sisters over there, we, uh, I solicit your prayers. These are times of election. And in those countries, it can get pretty deadly. So the brethren will be here, but uh, remember me uh, in prayer as I continue to fulfill the will of God. God will give me an open door to continue to push his gospel. Precious God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and we appreciate you. We ask that the word of God will go forth and be a blessing to all those who have an ear to hear. Without you, we can do nothing. And we ask that the hand of the Lord would lead and guide us. Amen. I thank God for all things. <clears throat> and realizing that these are the last days and the end of the world is upon us. As people grow older, they do different things. Some retire and they have a desire to travel. Some spend time with the kids or the grandkids. Others do other things, like get involved in hobbies. Some live a carefree life, not necessarily an evil, but they're old now and they just want to live a life that maybe they couldn't live before. Or sometimes they even try to do things that they were denied coming up and now that they are reaching the end of days, they try to, you know, put together a playlist, you understand? But, me, I desire in my aging to fulfill God's will in my life. Amen. Amen. No matter what it takes. No matter what I have to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The day is a number. And so, the way I see it, why not give it all to him? Amen. Amen. And let nothing distract that. Amen. I want to talk about <clears throat> uh, 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 an approach of the enemy. Uh, we're going to start in the book of Judges, chapter 3. Uh, the devil is the god of deception. And he uses many approaches, but <clears throat> there are certain approaches, I want to say maybe military tactics, we can say spiritually, that are used by both good and the bad. And I want to talk about one tactic that it would take the Lord to deliver you from. It would, it would take the Lord to deliver you. Uh, so I want to talk about a tactic of the enemy. Uh, not, not just the enemy, but <clears throat> a spiritual or military tactic that has a 99% success. Only God can deliver anybody from this book. <clears throat> uh, 
and it can be used by good and by bad. But if God doesn't intervene, it succeeds. So, <clears throat> when I use the word enemy, I'm using it, what does it say, generic, uh, universal. If it's Joshua, who's the enemy of the Canaanites. Yes, sir. Or if it's Egypt, who's the enemy of Israel. It's concerning the enemy, period. Whether the enemy is the righteous destroying the wicked or the wicked trying to destroy the righteous. Yes, sir. When the enemy comes in from the left. May God bless the reading of his word. We start off in the book of Judges, chapter 3, and the verse. 12? Yes, let's see what this says. I was looking for you out the window, man. I say, <laughs> I didn't know pastor had to work. I forgot, and then I was looking for you. <laughs> oh, bless you. I'm coming, Papa. I'm coming. <laughs> coming around the corner. Here yes, you come. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. Go ahead. And the children of Israel <clears throat> did evil. Again, in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the, the king of Moab, eighteen years. Mm. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up, a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his remnant upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself, Turn again from the quarries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret, Iran, unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silent. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehu came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer uh, parlor, which he had for himself alone. And he who said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And he heard, put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade. And the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. And the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor was, was locked, they said, Surely he covered his feet in his summer chamber. And they tarried till they were ashamed. And behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore, they took a key and opened them. And behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto Seraph. And it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount and he before them. And he said, 
unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the forts of Jordan toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at, the, at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor. And they escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day up under the hand of Israel and the and the land had rest four score years. Amen. I want to call this the unexpected attack. You don't see it coming. You didn't even think, think of it, but it came. Israel has sinned. That's a, that's a lot of good points in this. But the Bible says they got deliverance when they cried out to the Lord. Deliverance is between you and God Amen. for whatever reason. And if you cry out a broken and contrary spirit, God will not. Refuse. He even heard the cry of Ahab. Amen. When you cry out to the Lord, <clears throat> he will send help out of the sanctuary. He would deliver. But <clears throat> here it is. The, the king had attacked Israel because of their rebellion, of course, but he did what he would, and they cried out, and God Heard the cry. Now they sent a messenger, Ehud, and uh, he took gifts to the king of the Moabites, right? And after he, but, 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 nobody knew what he was doing, but he also took a dagger and he put it in his right side. And he went in to the king and gave gifts, and the king received it coming from his servants, and everything was fine. But then the man turned around and told those who brought the gifts, leave the room for a minute. And he came back. And he said to the king, I got a message from God. And the king stood up to hear it. He said, I'll come and tell it to you. So he went in closely. And while he was pretending to whisper in the king's ear. He did not see the left hand attack. The unexpected. Ehud, being left-handed, weak to his right side, king didn't see it coming, took the dagger and stuck it straight in him. And because the king was fat, his weight covered it up. And thus the king died, and Israel came in and got their victory. There was no way the king could have survived that Amen. unless God stepped in. Now, this was in a righteous way. <clears throat> That's why I'm saying the unexpected attack from the enemy. It could be righteous or unrighteous. Israel was this man's enemy, but they were righteous. But God gave them deliverance. So here's the enemy, Israel, coming into a wicked nation using this tactic. The unexpected coming in with the left hand, and it worked. <clears throat> How did he get in so close? How does this tactic work? It, this is a close encounter strike. And you have to get the victim to be at ease. Amen. And you come in the appearance of peace, friendship. Yes. friendship. <laughs> but treasure thou me with a kiss, friend, Jesus said to Judas. 
and when they are at ease. You can try to use some of their own characters against them, their own attributes. The man was fat. He used a man's fat against him. He stabbed that knife in so far that the fat covered it. That when the king's servants opened the door, they thought he was asleep. On the other hand, after the death of Saul, Abner took over the military uh, expeditions of Israel for Saul's son. And him and Joab were fighting. And Israel lost the battle. Abner retreated. The battle was over and but Joab had a younger brother, was a mighty man, not at the top of the list, but he was on the list. But he was mighty for his speed. He could fight, not like the elders, but his speed gave him the upper hand. And while Joab, Abner, was <clears throat> retreating, by the way, this is nothing against left-handers. The tribe of Benjamin had the three times it was mentioned left-handers, and it was in the tribe of Benjamin, and they were all military. You see, so, but it, nothing against the left hand. Okay. Just saying. Okay. Now, but while Abner was <coughs> retreating, he saw Joab's little brother coming. He recognized him. <coughs> Excuse me, the man's running so fast. He said, "Aren't you Joab's little brother?" "Yes, I am." He said, "Look, you're no match for me. Turn to the right or to the left." Fight one of these younger brothers, but you know, match with me. I already saw the boy was dead because he was running at a momentum he couldn't stop. That's right. So I'm going to say, how could I face your brother knowing that I killed his younger brother in war? Go to the right or to the left, but the boy didn't listen. And as soon as he got up on Abner, Abner just stuck his spear out. The boy ran right into it. Joab came up in anger <clears throat> to try to attack Abner, but the men of Benjamin came and stood like a wall. Abner said, enough blood has been shed today, brother. I mean, you saw what happened. And they left. And according to the scriptures, I don't think they ever fought each other like that again. Time went by. And Abner, trying to look out for the house of Saul, <clears throat> Saul's son that was on the throne, accused Abner of trying to speak to one of the father's concubines. And Abner was wroth. Right. <clears throat> he said, I'm sitting up here protecting the throne. Your father's dead. And I'm still fighting for you. And this is what you say to me? He said, I tell you what. Yes, sir. Let me show you where the power is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this kingdom and give it to David. It was his anyway. Amen. By God. How many times do we do things because of favor for people, knowing that God's not in it? Amen. Or for favoritism. Anyway, Abner goes, and he comes to David. <clears throat> and he brings all of Israel. David, this is the kingdom. We're giving it to you as the word of the Lord said. Of course, David replied, you, you go back and get my first wife and bring her back. Which ended up cursing him. <clears throat> but nevertheless... Abner gave the kingdom. Abner was happy. He did the right thing. He was a good man, the Bible says. <clears throat> and even though David spoke to Abner in the time of protecting Saul, he said, why didn't you protect the king? You deserve to die. David was just talking, but be careful what you say when you're That's just right. talking. That's right. But Abner was a good man, <clears throat> and he did a good thing. And David sent him away in peace. What word got back to Joab? what David had did. And Joab was angry. So he ran in there and rebuked David. What are you doing? This man comes to <laughs> speaking by his own mind. <laughs> you trying to destroy us? What are you doing? This man comes to deceive us, to kill us. Lord, help the saint when they think they know more than a real man of God. Amen. Listen. Abner went and heard where Joel left and heard where Abner was. So he sent him a messenger. Hey, David wants you to come back again. We need to talk. So Abner came back. And Joab went to meet him. Joab. Abner, hey, 
Abner, Joab was so happy. Hey, man. Now, I guess he was trying to say, you heard what I did. Right. And <clears throat> he went to embrace him, and he came close to him, and Abner put one hand around him, if I'm correct, and grabbed his beard, and took a sword and put it through his fist reel. And the man died. When David heard about it, he cried. And he mourned. And that's when the people knew that David had nothing to do with that. Amen. And he cried. He said, by Alma, you died like a fool. Your hands were not tied, neither were your feet feathered. You fallen before a wicked man. So fallest thou. And all the people wept. A wicked man brought you down. But he used a tactic that only God can deliver you from. I call it the left hand approach, the unexpected attack. Amen. He used Adam's kind heart and obedient spirit. He came back with joy and he had to get close to him. God protect us. Yes, Lord Jesus. From that unexpected Amen. close encounter Jesus. attack Amen. of the enemy. If you have to use that tactic, be sure you're using it righteously. Yes, because if God does not protect that person, it will definitely succeed. Amen. If he doesn't step in, mm -hmm. and the time had went by before between the fight of Abner and Joab. Abner, in his heart, everything was fine. Amen. But in Joab, he didn't pursue, pursue Abner. He didn't go after him anymore. But when he saw the opportunity to get in close, mm -hmm. it all came out. Mercy, Jesus. And he struck. And Abner fell. To Abner, everything was fine. God had gave peace. Everybody was doing great. But to Joab, though he came with a smile, even Ehab, he came in the name of the Lord to the king of Moab. Hey, I got a word from God. And he took him out. Though Ehab was righteous, he used the tactic right. How are you using it? Listen, when you are attacked by the enemy, willfully or unwillfully, in the wrong way, if you know that God is not in that and it doesn't enter into you, that means God protected you from that unsuspected attack, Amen. don't fear it. Amen. The next move is on God. Amen. You stand strong with what you know God has told you. And no matter what comes against your soul, if it's not of God, don't give in to it. Amen. Don't fear it. Because God's not in it. And don't allow it to cause you to lose your integrity. Because God is not in it. And he will speak on your behalf. Yes, Lord. Amen. He will speak on, he so told God by, uh, on your behalf. So you, you, you may not like how it happens. But if you know God's not in it, don't let it destroy your spirit or bring it down. You keep on rejoicing and praising God. Yes, Lord. Because God protected you. He protected you because he knew. He, he knew that that blow would have done damage if it had entered in. But when it doesn't enter into you, you understand me, son? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something goes down and something comes at your heart, words or whatever it be. But if it doesn't enter into you, you know God protected you. Amen. And if the manner in which I might approach you was ungodly, then you know that I didn't move in the spirit. Amen. So then why listen to it? Amen. Why be moved by it? Amen. Don't even be bitter. Don't even be full of hatred. Just thank God. He delivered you and protected you from the unexpected blow. Amen. 
coming in from the left when you least expect it. Amen. You didn't see it coming, but God did. So rejoice and pray for those who may have been overtaken by such spirits. Amen. But you stand strong and don't allow it to pull your spirit down. Amen. Because God ain't in it, then what are you yielding to it for? If it didn't penetrate, that means God protected you because you didn't see it coming. Until next time. Jesus. Pray that God protect you from that unexpected attack. Amen. When you least suspect it, Jesus. you don't see it coming. But thank God we have a God that never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. He protects you. Rejoice in your deliverance. God bless you. I'll see you when I return back to Atlanta. You have been listening to Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated at 8014 Rock Ridge Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Join us each Sunday for our 2 p.m. miracle service and at 8 p.m. on Wednesday for Bible study. And for the 24-hour prayer line, call 770-912-0433. 770-912-0433. To make a donation to this ministry, you may do so at Tabernacle of David Church, P.O. Box 390156, Snailville, Georgia, 30039-9997. Or email us at Dr. L. Bryant at T-O-D-C-A-D-I-N-T-L dot com.